Hi there. Thanks for watching the Vedanta channel. Advaita Vedanta is one of the greatest philosophical ideas in human history. Its examinations of the self, the world and God represent a pinnacle of human thought. Advaita Vedanta is one of the many schools of Hindu philosophy. Although it is over 3000 years old, it continues to remain fresh and inspiring even in the modern age. In this talk, I will describe the teachings of Advaita Vedanta and how they can help us find peace in our lives. Before we dive into Advaita Vedanta, let's first take a look at religion and philosophy. What is the difference between religion and philosophy? Typically, religion answers the what and how questions. What should I do? How do I achieve my potential? Philosophy usually deals with the why questions. Why do I do what I do? Why do I exist? Both religion and philosophy combine and help us make sense of it all. Together, religion and philosophy can help us live happy and purposeful lives. In Hinduism, the path of philosophy or knowledge is called Jnana Yoga. Vedanta is one of the six major schools of Jnana Yoga in Hinduism. The foundational texts of Vedanta are the Upanishads, the Brahma Sutra and the Bhagavad Gita. Together they are known as Prasthana Trayi. Advaita Vedanta is a sub-school within the Vedanta school of philosophy. What does Advaita Vedanta teach? In essence, Advaita Vedanta is a description of the relationships between you, the world and God. The central teaching of Advaita Vedanta is that you are God, that your true self is divine. What does this mean? What do they mean by true self? What is the meaning of God? Let's take a look at how Advaita Vedanta describes the self. The Sanskrit word for self is Atman. The self or Atman is not your body or your mind or your intellect. Atman is the pure consciousness that illumines the mind. But for Atman or consciousness, you would not be able to experience life and this world. Your true self is Atman or consciousness. Next, let's look at the description of God in Advaita Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta says that there is a deep fundamental reality called Brahman. It is from Brahman that everything arises. It is the source of all things. Brahman is the substratum. It is the foundational reality. Brahman is without intent or purpose. It just is. You cannot transact with Brahman. You cannot pray to it or plead with it. Brahman is indescribable. It lies beyond the world of words, name and form. Brahman lies beyond space, time and causality. Brahman does not exist. It is Sat, pure existence itself. Brahman is not conscious. It is Chit, pure consciousness itself. Brahman is not just peaceful. It is Ananda, pure peace itself. This triad of Sat, Chit, Ananda is what Advaita Vedanta calls God. Brahman is the cuisance of the universe. The great rishis describe Brahman as the silence that comes after the chanting of Om. Advaita Vedanta says that you are Brahman. The Mahavakyas or the great statements of the Upanishads proclaim this truth. Tat Tvam Asi, that thou art, says the Chandogya Upanishad. Prajnanam Brahma, this consciousness is Brahman, says the Aitariya Upanishad. Aham Brahma Asmi, I am Brahman, says the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. I am Atma Brahma, this self is Brahman, says the Mandukya Upanishad. They all proclaim the same truth. Your true self is divine. How do we understand this? 
Advaita Vedanta says that there are many temporary or secondary realities. People come and people go. Things come and things go. But there is only one reality which is limitless and timeless. That is Brahman. Everything, you, me, birds, rocks and stars are but waves that rise and fade in this ocean of consciousness. So the question naturally arises, if there is only one, then why do we see many? The world contains many objects. They all appear separate and distinct from each other. Space, time and causality cause these objects to appear separate, although they are really one and the same thing. The Sanskrit word for this amazing magic trick of space-time causality is Maya. How can we apply this truth in our daily lives? This truth can set us free from the sorrows of life. It can enhance the joy of living. We begin to see our existence in a breathtakingly broader context. We begin to see our fears and worries as ephemeral. We begin to see the world as one. Questions cease in our minds. Restlessness is replaced by calm. We become peace itself. How can we practice this truth? Advaita Vedanta asks you to not identify yourself with your body, mind or intellect. You are not your body. You are not your mind. Neither are you the intellect. You are existence. You are that consciousness that shines through the mind. You are peace itself. Those who grasp and live this truth are called jnanis. They are enlightened beings. Jnanis fully engage in the temporary realities of the world but are unaffected by them. They live full lives but are always aware of the transient nature of human life. The greatest examples of jnanis in Hinduism are Rama and Krishna, mighty kings who achieved the greatest of success without being affected by them. For this, they are worshipped as avatara purushas, the purest manifestations of the divine. A jnani is not controlled by the body, mind or the intellect. Instead, he or she uses the mind, the body and the intellect as instruments. They are not fooled by the multiplicity in the world. Instead, they see an indivisible oneness in all things. They dissolve the personal ego and experience a deep connection to all things. By dissolving the ego, the jnani transcends suffering, an inevitable part of human existence. They attain liberation from the compulsions that arise out of ignorance. They attain Sat Chit Ananda, the indestructible bundle of existence, consciousness and peace. Can ordinary people like us hope to achieve Sat Chit Ananda? Definitely yes. The most important ingredient of self-awareness is the hunger for it. If you truly want it, then there is no power that can stop you from attaining it. Brahman is not as uncommon as you might think. Look around you and you will see Brahman everywhere. You can see Brahman in that moment LeBron James releases the ball from his hand. It is a state where pure consciousness is detached from the body, mind and intellect and uses them as instruments. Brahman is poetry in motion. Brahman is a musician in action. Brahman is a baby looking into her mother's eyes. Brahman is you when you are lost in love. Brahman is being in the zone. All of us have been Brahman for a few seconds already in our lives. If we can be Brahman for a few seconds, then we can certainly be Brahman forever. This state of peace is higher than anything that any God can offer us. It is the highest goal of human existence. It is available to us 
right here and right now in this very life itself. This is the great lesson of Advaita Vedanta. 